and then remain standing as we honor America through the playing of our national anthem. Father God, I thank you for each person under the sound of my voice today. I thank you for your providence in getting each of us here safely, and I ask for your continued providence during the game today. May you provide safety, fun, and good sportsmanship on the field and in the stands. May athletes, coaches, officials, and fans not miss that this is an opportunity to worship you, God. You have created all things, including this great game, and we thank you for the opportunity to enjoy this gift together today. In your son's name, amen. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Olathe District Activity Center as the visiting pride of Clark University travel into Olathe, Kansas to take on your Mid-American Nazarene University pioneers. The pride come into today. They are one and three here in the still the early stages of the season. And then the pioneers are three and one coming off of a victory here at home last week against William Penn. So we're looking for a good one here today. During the coin toss, I do believe uh, it was the, no, I'm sorry, the Pioneers who won the coin toss, they elected to defer, so they will receive the ball to begin the second half of action. Clark University will get the first shot today on offense. Nice day here in Olathe. We had storms rumbling through all morning, so the field is definitely going to be a little slick out there, a little wet as uh, hopefully the AstroTurf will dry quickly. Right now we've got a mix of sun and clouds, a little bit of breeze out there. Temperature is warming up. Earlier it was projected to be almost 90 today, but the storms cooled things off. We're getting closer to 80. So pleasant, but still it's going to get warm on that AstroTurf. Kick chases Clark back, fielded about the three. Ooh, nice return, big leap over the pile of uh, defenders and his own blockers. And then down to the turf. Let's see where Clark is going to take over. They've got a player shaking up on this play. So they're going to help him get off the field, and the ball's going to be at the 33-yard line. I'm sorry, folks. I've got, a, got an issue with my headset here. Let's see if I can get this figured out. Hopefully everyone can hear this just fine. We've been fighting technical difficulties all morning. So now the first drive. Drop back pass. Off to the left side has his receiver. And we're in about second and four coming up here on this opening drive by the Pride. So Kenyon Williams, a senior, 6'1", 190, quarterback for Clark University. Had a one touchdown, two interception performance last week. Comes out firing here in the early stages of today's game. If you happen to be watching on YouTube, the Pride are in all white uniforms with their dark blue helmets. And then the Pioneers are in all dark blue uniforms with their silver helmets. Now we've got a player's hat comes off during the play. A run for a first down by the Pride. Ball up to the 45-yard line.
Craig Elmore with the carry. Enough for the first down. Now the quarterback's going to hand off, going right up the middle and taken him down by the Pioneer offensive line, able to fall forward. I think he's going to get three on this play, maybe four. The official doing a little tap dancing over there on where he wanted to spot the ball. Four-yard gain on that first down carry. Second and six coming up, ball at the 49. Three wide receivers to the quarterback's right, one to his left. Bit of a bunch formation. Ooh, dangerously close to a false start. Now off the play action pass down the field and knocked away by the Pioneer defender. Good defense by the Pioneers. Defender had a step, but able to make up ground. I do believe this was Maxwell Weber able, able to knock that ball away. So third and six, facing the Pride offense. They don't ever seem to go into a huddle, at least not on this opening drive. They look to the sideline for their play. Two wide receivers to each side of the quarterback. They're going to send the running back out in the flat. They're going to sling it away. Big hit, able to hold on. That's enough for the first down, at least so it appears up here to me. And indeed it is, first down. That was a great catch. That by, let's see, Xavier Tate. Xavier Tate able to hold on, absorbing the contact, and he got hit hard right at the first down marker. So the Pride sustaining their drive, keeping it moving. Man in motion coming across. They're going to fake the sweep. Quarterback's going to keep it, and now hit at the line and taken down. They're going to give him two yards on this play, but not a, not a hit you really want your quarterback to take often as he gets wrapped up by two Pioneer defensive linemen and dropped to the ground. <laughs> Quarterback now sending his man in motion. Tight end on the move. Tight end's going out. They're looking at him now flying in his direction. Overshoots, but as a man... We had two players in the area. The wide receiver able to come up with it, though. That's a first down catch. Still moving the chains. Good opening drive by the Pride. Pioneers defense leaving some people open. And they got burnt on that play. So ball is first and 10. 28-yard line. Again, Clark, they are driving. They're opening possession. And now they're going to hand it off up the middle. Now bouncing to the outside, left side. Good run here on first down. This is Craig Elmore again. Craig Elmore, 5'9", 225. And he looks like he's built like a fullback. And has no problem just trying to muscle it past everyone. I will gladly sit up here and not get in his way as he runs. Second and four, and they're going to give it to Elmore again. No, play action pass going over the middle, and ooh, the receiver not able to come up with the catch. He is hit. It's going to be third and four. All right, so third and four coming up. Pioneers making a late substitution. Player able to get off in time. In third and four in the 22. Whoa. And they're going to drop back, looking to pass, looking left. Quick, outside, and misses his man. They had the first down, but the pass out of reach of the receiver. But the offense not even making a motion to the sideline. Looks like on fourth and four, at least at this moment, they're going to go for it. Yeah, at no point in time did anyone on the offense take a step towards the sideline like special teams was coming in. They clearly are planning on going for this the whole way. I'd watch the design quarterback keeper on this, just me personally. Three wide receivers out to the right of the quarterback. He's going to drop back, looking right, looking right, now throwing, has a man. 
Great catch. Pioneer defender was never able to get his head around. And now they're going to have him down at the one-yard line. That was a great pass by Jaden, or I'm sorry, a great catch by Jaden Wire. Now, a lot of people from Clark thinking he came down in the end zone, and I'm not going to lie, I think they've got a legitimate complaint. But the officials quickly spot him down at the one. So on the fourth and four, Clark able to come up with a lot of it, and they are on the doorstep of the end zone on their opening possession of the game. Man in motion. Quarterback's going to keep it. Working left side and able to walk into the end zone. And that's going to be a touchdown. I'm sorry, they lined up in a wildcat formation. I just saw that. That was not the quarterback who went in. It was Thomas Mimes, the running back, who was lined up in the quarterback position, just took the direct snap, went left side, and is able to take it in. And with that, quickly, the Pride jump out in front, 6-0, pinning the extra point, taking five minutes off of the clock here in the first quarter. Low snap, but... Place holder is able to collect. Kick is up and the kick is good. The Pride now 7-0 in the early stages of the ball game. I want to thank everyone for tuning in today. We were delayed just by a half hour, unfortunately, due to the storms. We had to wait until all the lightning had left the area before the players could get out there and start getting warmed up. So we apologize for the delay. We thank you for your patience. Both everyone who might be tuning in from Clark University, thank you for joining us here on the Pioneer Sports Network. And everyone here at MNU, you shouldn't be listening to me. You should be here at ODAC watching the game. I mean, unless you're out of the area, then I guess you have an excuse. So 10-12 remains in the first quarter. Clouds have still never left the area. This was supposed to be a bright, sunshiny day, and then these storms just came rolling through out of nowhere. And looking out there, it's, I would not be surprised if we saw some raindrops fall through the course of this game. It's possible. It certainly looks like it. Hopefully no storms that will stop play. Let's not do that. And here's the run and the kick. Ooh, got up in the wind. That's going to be fielded almost at the 15-yard line by the Pioneers. Trying to angle right side. Able to get through one wall of defenders. Now into kind of the second level. And I don't know why we're running to the wrong sideline, but that's okay. That was Kolb with the return. Good return. And the Pioneers are going to have decent field possession to start their first drive of the game. Now trying to answer the touchdown drive by Clark. So Adrian Parsons bringing out the Pioneer offense. He's going to start with four receivers to his left side, one to the right. Now Cherry is going to join him in the backfield. They fake it to Cherry. Ooh, they got a lick on Parsons. Deep pass and just not able to collect out of reach. Parsons takes a little bit of a shot there. Again, with all those people out wide, his only protection were the linemen. And one member of the Pride was able to get by and put a little bit of a hit on him. So the Pioneers, on their very first play, trying to dial long distance. They're going to fake it to Cherry again. Parsons still going the same direction. Yikes, what happened there? Parsons and Himes not on the same page. I think Parsons thought this was a go. Himes thought it was a curl. And the only person in the air was the defender, fortunately, off the defender's fingertips and incomplete. Okay, so the Pioneers offense there, you're trying to strike quickly. However, 0-2 on their first two pass attempts. Parsons looking again over the middle. Himes had it and dropped it. Could not absorb the hit on that one. Wasn't going to be enough for the first down. And with that, a quick three and out by the Pioneer offense. So that opening drive was everything you don't want if you're a Pioneer fan. Hmm. We 
try and break down where that all went wrong. Well, we never caught the ball. That's where it went wrong. Pioneers did pull off one fake punt last week. Not trying this time. Low line drive kick. Great punt, though. Look at this puppy go. Fielded by the Pride. I might have just let that go to the end zone. Now a block in the back. Pride still scamping all around. They might end up with a good return here, although I do think this is all coming back. And now taken out of bounds around the 35-yard line. Flags all the way back near the 12-yard line. The Zebras will confer and see what the actual call is. So, let's see, Ostrander had a good return. But again, I think he was freed up by an illegal block. Let's see what the officials say. We were having problems with the officials' field mic earlier, so we're going to have to do our best to... Oh, it's working now. Score. There we go. Blindside block called by the officials. Half the distance to the goal as it took place at the 12-yard line. So they're going to march them back to the 6. So a long way to go for the Pride offense. 9.35 remaining in the first quarter. The Pioneers opening drive didn't even take a full minute off the clock. So they're losing on the scoreboard and time of possession. Mm. There's the snap, just going to be a run right up the middle. Pioneer defensive line is there. And this, let's see, they, I think they will give him a yard. Martinez credited with the tackle. It was a carry by Elmore. And they're going to do the exact same thing, run up the middle. Pioneer offense, or defensive line, I'm sorry, able to collect. Just trying to muscle forward. Now maybe a gain of two, going to bring up third and long. Well, they might have given him three. I might sit corrected. Okay, third and five. So third and five for the Pride. Now, they were able to convert several third down plays on their opening drive. See if they've got the same magic here. Will the Pioneers bring the heat this time? They do not. Quick shot to the outside, collected, and that's going to be a first down. Jaden Wire able to come up with the first down catch. And they needed five, got about seven. And that's enough. Again, no huddle, but definitely wouldn't call this any kind of a hurry-up offense. Pioneers ready, man in motion. Pioneers look like they're staying in the zone defense. Dropping back, looking left, throwing left, has a man. At the first down marker, going to be enough for another first down. As the Pride are just marching, both drives. So far, yet to be stopped. So first and 10, ball on the 31-yard line. Three wide receivers right, one left. Running back remains in the backfield with quarterback. A little play action pass. Screening it quickly. Ooh, met by the Pioneers. And this is going to be a two-yard gain on that quick screen pass to the right side. Able to make one Pioneer miss, but not the next two. Okay, now, now the Pratt quickly to the ball. Now it looks like they're really trying to speed things up. The center was already over it before they already placed it. Snap, run up the middle with Elmore. Pop, but see, he's big, so he's moving the, moving the uh, pile forward. Good initial contact, but he just kept moving. And now a third and short. Second and eight turns into third and three. Getting third and three doesn't mean much. He had a fourth and four earlier, went for it. So apparently Clark has no problem playing all four downs on offense. 
Three wide receivers again on the right, so this is probably going to be a quick pass right. That's what they seem to do. The Pioneers bring a blitz, picked up. They're able to get a hand on the quarterback. He scampers away, has the first down and more, and now taken down near midfield. Pioneers had him in the backfield but couldn't wrap him up. The quarterback able to get away, creates for the first down and more. Ball near midfield. Pioneers were close to getting that sack, but not quite there. They brought the brought the blitz this time. Couldn't quite get there. Now we're going to run right side. Pioneer defensive line there. Ooh. Elmore got popped on that one. He's all right, though. Pioneers had him wrapped up, and then the next defender that came in just lowered the hammer to end that play. Gain of one. So Jones credited with the tackle for the Pioneers. Changing the pace and slowing it back down. Or the pride in no hurry on this play. Two wide receivers each side. Running back remains in the backfield with the quarterback. He's going to drop back. Three-step drop. Looking right, looking right, now trying to step forward. Has space, trying to create. And scampers out of bounds, short of the first down. But able to get most of it on second and nine. Surprised that he went out of bounds when he did. I thought he could have gotten a few more or tried to take on the one defender that was there, but elected to show a little caution. Bringing up third and three. Ball now in Pioneer territory. Will the Pioneers bring the blitz? They do. A little delayed blitz. They're going to chase him out right. Someone's got to contain. Going for the first down marker. Tripped up and knocked out. One yard past it. So that's another first down for Clark. I think everyone, including the popcorn vendor, knew that that play was going to be a quarterback run. Indeed it was. But nobody, including the popcorn vendor, could stop it. So first down for Clark. We don't even have a popcorn vendor. So the first quarter has completely belonged to the Pride. One possession, a quick three and out for the Pioneers, and that is all they have seen in this football. Here's a run by Elmore, able to get through the line. Now bowls over someone in the secondary and taken down by three Pioneers. Plenty for the first down. And Elmore... Is having a day so far, just in the first quarter. First and ten from the 28 yard line. Sun is popping out right now. Let's see if maybe the sun will help the pioneers. Yeah, who knows? A glare off of a helmet might slow Elmore down. Could happen. Going to hand it off up the middle again. Elmore bounces it outside. Big hit by the Pioneers. His helmet goes flying off again. Oh, nope, that's a Pioneer helmet. I was going to say, second time he's lost his helmet. Nope. Pioneer helmet flies off. Pioneers welcoming in a lot of Miniature cheerleaders today. Lots of little kids over there with their pom-poms doing the cheerleading. They're going to hand it off up the middle again. Ooh, Piner defense is there. This time he goes nowhere. That is no gain on that second and six carry. Bringing up third and six. Although well, third and anything hasn't really been the defense's strong suit so far today. Pioneers really need to stop right here. Any kind of loss of yard, yardage, might make Clark think about it on special teams. So again, we ask, will they bring the blitz on this play? Clark looking to their sideline for the play. So far, three wide receivers on the left side, one on the right. Clark has never tried to get too fancy on any kind of third down. They get to the sticks, and that's it. They're not trying to dial long distance. 
Quarterback gets away from the defender, still looking downfield, turns upfield. I think he's going to be short of this first down, but a fourth and four coming up. And again, not one player from Clark has taken a step towards the sideline like they're coming off for any kind of special teams. So on fourth and five officially, the offense remains on the field. I'm looking, they do carry a kicker on their roster. Unless he is injured and I don't know about it. Again, second time in field goal range, and they've done nothing. Now this time, a timeout is called by Clark. So they were just taking time off the clock. 51 seconds remain in the first, qu first quarter, so now we'll see who breaks this huddle, the offense or the special teams. Let's see if my mental math is mildly correct, and most of the time it's not. Let me do this here. Let's see, the ball is at the... 28, so we go 38, then we go 7. This would be in the neighborhood of a 42-yard field goal. Field goal attempt, so we'll have to see. That's what they decide to go for. All right, the offense back on the field. No special teams attempt here. So the Pioneers defense going to try and answer here on fourth and five, ball on the 23. Can they get a turnover on downs? Quarterback dropping back, looking left, pressure comes, throws over the middle, low, incomplete pass. Oh, and a late flag comes in. This is going to be something, some kind of hit on the quarterback. Was he too low or was he late? Oh, they've picked up the flag. Never mind. There was a flag on the play. They have picked up the flag, and that is a turnover on downs. Ball back to the Pioneers. So with 48 seconds remaining, the, ball, the Pioneers see the ball for the second time this quarter. And if you see everyone scrambling, even though the sun is out and it's shining on the field, it is now raining on us. <laughs> I told you guys, this has just been a wacky weather day here in Kansas. So, yeah, so, nope, it is it is now raining, even though it's perfectly sunny on the field. Parsons in the Pioneer offense taking over on the 23. They're going to give it to Finley. Finley right side. And he's going to be drugged down for a small game, maybe two. So we'll see if the Pioneers decide to perhaps run a play before the end of this quarter. They actually don't have to, but it looks like they're going to. Parsons has three to his left. Finley remains in the backfield. And they're going to fake it to Finley over the middle. Himes again, and Himes again gets hit and drops it. Himes is struggling to, to bring that ball in. If you're going over the middle, you have, you have to expect you're going to get hit. Like, that's just nature of the beast. He's just having a hard time bringing it in. Maybe that little rain shower didn't help either, which I think it's already stopped at this point. <laughs> Strange weather. Third and seven. Parsons drops back. Pressure coming from the edge. He's hit. Ball's free. And that is picked up by the defense. And now wrestled down. I don't think in any universe is that going to be a forward pass. So I think that is a fumble. And the Pioneers offense heads off the field. And Clark basically gets the ball right back where they left it on that turnover on downs. So Adams recovers the fumble. Ball's placed on the 27-yard line, first and 10 for the Pride. All right, 
the offense back onto the field. Man goes in motion. Stops, reverses course, and now whistle blown. They're going to blow this play dead. Oh, a delay of game on the offense. Coming out of the change of possession. That is the kind of thing that it will keep a coach up at night. So first and 10 goes to first and 15. Williams so far in this game, 7 for 11, 70 yards. His long speed, 21. He's going to drop back, pass here, looking, 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 scrambling, trying to make one man miss, able to get the corner, and now taken out of bounds. Past the original line of scrimmage by a yard, I do believe. We're going to bring up a second and nine. See, Elmore has eight rushing attempts for 42 yards. And then it is, I believe, Mines. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. He has three attempts, five yards, but has the touchdown. With that, that's going to be the end of the first quarter. So end of the first quarter, 7-0. The visiting pride from Clark on top of the Mid-American Nazarene University Pioneers after one quarter. 7-0 on this very strange weather day. And I can feel it coming through the window here. Those uh, storms knocked the temperature down, but now that they're kind of moving away, here comes the heat. And again, we were expecting a hot day today. Well, it's on its way. I can feel it going up now. We're going to have heat and humidity. Oh, the Midwest. Got to love it. So I've noticed it has been extremely quiet in the YouTube chat room. If you guys are watching on YouTube, you can see where you can kind of communicate with us here in the booth. Would love to know who you're rooting for, what's your school, who's your player, where are you watching from. If you're out of the area, let us know. We'll give you a shout out here during the broadcast. We've been having fun with this over the last few years now. It's hard to believe it's been a few years we've been offering the, the YouTube version of the game. So we've had a lot of fun in the chat room. Last week, the folks from William Penn, very talkative, very chatty in the chat room. <laughs> see what I did there? So we'll see if all of you Clark fa uh, fans are is equally interested. I know it's a Saturday afternoon game. We were in the evening last week. A lot of other games had settled up. Already done. But yeah, let us know who you're rooting for. Who's your player? Who's your school? And where are you watching from? All right, we are ready to start the second quarter. We have now flipped the field. So the Pride are now going to have the wind at their back. See if they try and air it out. They're going to hand it off to Elmore. Boy, howdy. Elmore just lowers his shoulder and annihilates a Pioneer defender. Slows him up enough, though, that... Uh, the rest of the Pioneers are able to get there and knock them down. No part of that looked comfortable. Here we go, second down. Two wide receivers each side. Elmore out of the backfield. They're going to launch it left side. Has a man. Was that complete or was he out of bounds? They're going to say that was a completed pass. Great throw. Good catch. Heading towards the sideline. Let's see here if you can see on the replay. And there we go. There's the throw. Okay. Not sure if we got the replay or not, but that's all right. If, uh, let's see, first and goal, ball on the five-yard line. Watch the quarterback keeper here. He's looking left, looking left. Pressure comes, throws over the middle, out of the reach of his man. He's close. Player had a step, not able to collect off of the outstretched fingertips. So now second down. Substitution being made. The receiver who missed the pass, and I'm sorry, it's hard to see his number. The white uniforms with the yellow lettering and then with the sun shining on them. Very hard to read the numbers. Sorry. But player left injured after not completing that pass. 
He's going to give it to Elmore up the middle. He's just going to try and move the pile. Why not? He still is. Good grief. So second and five is now going to be about third and uh, two, three. Depends on where they spot the ball. Here we go. I see some people there. We've got a Taylor fan for M and U. Clark fan. All right. Watching in Oakland, Maryland, number 73, Branson Sloan. Number 62, Brayden Sloan on Clark. All right. Atlanta, Georgia. Let's see. Supporter of Kobe Jones. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. All right. Clark again driving on the doorstep. They're going to give it to Elmore. Elmore, nice little jab step. Jab step left. Boy, I say that three times fast. Comes back to the right and goes into the end zone untouched for a Clark touchdown. Now Pioneer player is down and injured. And so an injury timeout called by the officials. Sorry, producer, what did they say about a helmet being off? The official said something on the mic about that. I didn't quite catch it. Yeah, player down for the Pioneers. Not getting any indication as to what the injury is. Now they're going to help him up to his backside, up to his feet. Nope, this is definitely a lower leg injury. Again, as the temperature goes up quickly, cramps could definitely be an issue. So just something to be aware of. Marco Flores, the injured Pioneer, but... Able to leave the field under his own power. And now after the touchdown, they are ready for the PAT. Good snap. Good placement. The kick is up. Boy. And that barely goes in. I'm not sure what happened there. But the kicker barely got enough on that to get it over the crossbar. It actually hit the crossbar. Still went in. I don't know if he... I'm, I can only think of a golf term. I think he chunked it. I think the foot had to have hit behind the ball. Yep, he did. I saw him. He just showed someone on the sideline what happened. His toe chunked into the AstroTurf. He barely was able to muscle that in on the PAT. So, again, a lot of breaking that down for absolutely nothing. It was still a good PAT. And with that, Clark extends their lead. They are now 14-0 with 13-12 remaining in the first half. Let's see what else we've got going on here. Sandstone, Minnesota, an alumni, class of 72. Welcome, welcome. Happy birthday, number five from Clark. Maddie supporting my nephew, Malachi Harris, number 18, Clark, Miami, Florida. Springfield, Missouri, got an m &U for Hiley, all right. Good job, everyone. A lot of Pride fans, glad you guys are joining us. Thank you very much. Great kickoff, bounces in the end zone. That'll be a touchback. And the Pioneer offense will take over at the 25-yard line, who have not been able to get anything going today. The Pioneer offense. I mean, I'd, I'd read you their stats if they had any. I mean, Parsons is 0 for 4, so there's that. Finley has a carry for three yards. And let's see, Parsons has a carry for one. And then we have the lost fumble. And the first three and out. So, that is the whole of the Pioneer offense so far. <laughs> On the other side, Williams is 7 for 11 still. Let's see. Let me refresh this. Sometimes our stats don't refresh up here in the booth. Let me just make sure we're right here. Still getting warmer out there. Nice breeze at the back of Clark right now on this kickoff. Uh, we're re-kicking. I'm not 100% sure why. Maybe somebody wasn't ready because I did not see any kind of a penalty on that play. Okay, here we go. So Williams is 8 for 13, 96 yards now. And then now Elmore has a touchdown. And uh, let's see, Mimes has a touchdown. I'm used to saying Himes from MNU. Now they go for a short kick, fielded by the up man. And this is actually going to be a great return for the Pioneers, able to cross over into Clark territory. They tried to, I wouldn't call it a squib kick, just a little chip shot. 
And the return man for the Pioneers, collected with a full head of steam, goes across the 50, ball down at the 48-yard line, but the Pioneers will start in pride territory. Let's see, go Kyler from Coral Springs, Florida. Brian and Joel Clark football. Let's see, Dade County. Zero and 26 from Homestead, Florida. Kobe Jones, Clark University. Go Pride, MNU, Northwest Arkansas. All right, all right. Now Parsons going to hand this off. Cherry, right side, slips. A able to get his footing, I think. Maybe not. Let's see where they place this. And I'm sorry, this was actually Caleb Bryant. Bryant with the carry. Are they, are they going to give him one? Two officials are lined up differently. Okay, no, they did not. Second and ten. Parsons has it. They're going to give it to Brian again. Same exact play this time. Positive yardage, but not a lot. Going to bring up a very third and long. Very third and long. Well, it's always very third. How about third and very long? Now the Pioneers quickly trying to get lined up. Third and eight. Three to the left, one to the right. Himes goes in motion, goes far left, all the way out. Parsons, play action pass, steps forward. He's going to try and create on his own and reaches forward. I think he's going to have enough. This is all going to come down to placement. One official actually has him a yard behind the first down marker. So he reached. On the reach, it looked like he got there, but the knees were definitely an issue, and I think his knee was down before the reach. Fourth and one, ball on the 39-yard line. Pioneers offense remains on the field. Confident they can get a yard. They're going to give it to Bryant. Nope. Captain, no. Nice rollout pass. Great catch. Little play action pass. Ball to the wide receiver. I'm sorry, the tight end. That was tight end. And he gets upended, and now he's hurt. Slow to get to his feet. He elevated. This is Mouser. Yeah, you know, he's hurting. Favoring his left leg. Again, you wonder if it's going to be a cramp. Hopefully, that's all it is. But a nice play for the Pioneers. First down. Their first first of the day. There's a quick screen. Ball's on the deck, and that's going to be incomplete. Pioneer receiver never had it. Contact while he was trying to catch, not able to collect. So Taylor not able to take that one in on first down, second and ten. Just showing where I am on a Saturday. I was looking, what are those little emojis they're putting in the chat room? Oh, those are lions. I get it. I get it now. I'm slow. Oh, and there's another drop by the Pioneers. I caramba. Uh, Mitchell had it. And now, he, to be fair, he had to reach back behind him to get it, but had it, was trying to pull it in. Out of his hands it goes. That's another incomplete pass. Third and ten. Pioneers in field goal range. However, they would be kicking into the wind on this one. They just need to get something on the board right now. See what they can do here on third and ten from the 18-yard line. They fake the screen pass. They give it to Brian up the middle. It's going to put it right in the center of the field, but definitely not enough for the first down. So good placement if you're already thinking ahead for the field goal attempt. However, the offense remains on the field. This is going to be fourth and four, I do believe. Waiting for the official spot of the ball. Fourth and six. I'm sorry, fourth and six. Empty backfield. They snap the ball. Parsons over the middle, and it's dropped again. A lot of people wanting a flag on that one. Honestly, I think that that is a, a pass you've got to collect. So Rogers not able to handle it. And, yep, the defender was there, but it hit him right in the bread basket. So that's a turnover on down by the Pioneers. They remain scoreless with 10-29 remaining in the second quarter. The Pride coming off their last touchdown drive with the ball again on the 14-yard line. And 
now they're just going to run this one right up the middle. And Elmore take it down. Good tackle by the Pioneer defensive lineman. They're going to give him one yard. Nope, a lie. They are giving him nothing. You get nothing and like it. And an MNU fan from Columbus, Ohio, welcome. Again, right now you got to imagine that the Pride are going to be in no hurry. And they've already shown that they can chew the clock up. That's pretty much what the entire first quarter was. So they would love a long, sustained drive, and they're going to run it right up the middle again. But the Pioneers knock this one down for a second time for no gain. Third and ten coming up. A little worrisome there is the Pioneers had a blitz, a little corner blitz. He might have run past the whole play. Instead, able to turn the corner and actually help bring Elmore down. So third down, will the Pioneers bring the heat? Inquiring minds want to know. Empty backfield. Dropping back. They do not. They bring everyone back. Long pass attempt. Has a man, and he's gone. What happened to the Pioneer defense there is they were nowhere to be seen on a very long touchdown pass of 86 yards, and that extends the lead of the Pride. 20-0. Pending the extra point. I mean, all I can think of on that play was that the cornerback released, thinking that the safety had coverage, and the safety was nowhere to be found. So I'm, I'm going to chalk that up to miscommunication, but a great throw and catch for the Pride either way. Whether someone's there or not, you still got to catch the ball. And everyone's lined up for the extra point. Good snap, good placement. The kick is up, and this time, no problem. The kick is good. And with that, the lead is now 21-0 with 9-11 remaining in the second quarter. Not even halftime yet. And the Pride are all over the Pioneers. All right, let's hit the old refresh button, see what we've got here for the Clark offense. As yes, we're here at the Olathe District Activity Center, we did, uh, hopefully everyone saw for MNU this week, break ground on what will be the new football stadium on campus when it is done being built, and I don't know the timeline. I'm not privy to that information, but ground has been broken. So very exciting on the campus of MNU that we will have a football stadium and hopefully the Kyle Walker announcing booth. Yeah, right. But that would be cool. Uh, and uh, It's going to be exciting times once that gets done. It'd be nice to be on campus. The Olathe District Activity Center has been lovely, but there is no place like home. So after the last drive for Clark, Williams now 9 for 14, 182 yards, one touchdown on that 86-yard bomb. Receiving, that was Wire. He has three receptions, 115 yards and a touchdown now. Then on the ground, Elmore, 13 carries, 53 yards, one touchdown, and he is doing work down there. Not, not afraid of the contact, shall we say. Parsons goes over the middle, has a man, and taken down. Nice open field tackle. A little short of the first down, but the Pioneers are right there. And that's going to be completed to Taylor. So we've got a Caleb Perry, MNU from let's see, Bartlesville, Oklahoma. Welcome to the broadcast. Pioneers, two receivers to the left, one to the right. Man goes in motion, blocking tight end. And now they're going to try and run it right side. Knocked down for minimal gain. I think they're only going to give him one. Cherry with the carry. Sean Cherry, the ball carrier. There we go. Charleston, South Carolina for Caleb Bryant. Number nine, Izzy from California. Shout out to Clark. Don't worry, we have second half questions too. So we're going to have more fun with this chat room. Atlanta GA, 
Number, fly, number five for Clark, all right. Oh, and happy birthday. Parsons looking to the sideline. Pioneers in no hurry, down to 10 on the play clock. Kind of wonder, is this play a little broken? Nope, they're going to snap. Give it to Cherry up the middle. Nope, play action pass. Dialing long distance into double coverage, underthrown, but collected. No! Incomplete, incomplete is the call. Oh, my goodness. I thought the Pioneers had a reception, and it looked like an interception. And the official now says incomplete. So we have covered the entire spectrum of potential calls on this play. Do we have a replay of that? Let's see. Oh, boy, I can't tell. All right, well, third and eight. Pioneers, they're already back to the ball. As Clark really was having a long word with the official. And now everyone is reset and ready to go on this third and eight. Play action pass again. Going left side, high pass. Collected, though. First down and a little more for the Pioneers. Now wrestled out of bounds. That was a great catch. Had to elevate and get to it, did Keon Taylor. But it's enough for the first down. The Pioneers are able to move the sticks on third and eight. All right, Pioneer first down. Trying to get something cooking here, down 21-0, heading towards halftime. Pioneers will get the ball to start the third quarter. Now here's the best run of the day. Up to the next first down marker. They're going to mark him a yard short. But Cherry had a very good run on that first down play. What do we got here? We've got Roseville, California, number 75 from Clark. Big name Brotato. I like that. That's good. Caleb Perry, number 84 from Bartlesville. All right. So Clark using their second timeout. They'd like to talk things over. As the Pioneers are trying to put together one of their better drives of the day. And we're right at seven minutes remaining. 21 nothing in favor of the pride of Clark. Pioneers. They came out flat, and I'm putting it kindly. Trying to get something together. As the sun comes out, and we're getting a little warmer. Maybe everyone's getting loosened up now. The turf is probably getting close to dried up now. And we had some crazy rain. I'm sure slowed everything down. But by now, it's got to be getting a little better. So we'll see if that is beneficial to the Pioneers. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Who knows? So many cheerleaders down there today. I like it. All right, so a second and one coming up for the Pioneer offense. Ball on the 40-yard line. Another one for number five, Kobe Jones, Atlanta, Georgia. I know I'm saying it's getting warm here. Probably hotter in Atlanta. All right, second and one. Parsons gives it to Cherry. Cherry up the middle. Boo, boy, he might not have gotten there. Indeed, he did not. Still one yard short. No gain on the play. Third and one. So the Pioneers now are going to take out their blocking tight end and put in another wide receiver. See if they can't spread it a little bit here on third and one. Maybe create for Parsons or Cherry if they're going to hand it off. Give it to Cherry again. He's got the first down this time. This was enough. You can get more people off the line and spread out for coverage. Creates a little more space. So a first down carry. Cherry's going to come off the field. Finley's checking in. A little thunder and lightning duo that the Pioneers have. Cherry, he's definitely the thunder. And Finley's lightning. Little sweep now. They toss it to the wide receiver. He's got a, got some blockers, but now runs into a big pile of people. So small game for the Pioneers. I'm sure they wanted more off of that one. J.D. Kolb was the ball carrier. Able to come up with about three yards on that play. Gain of three, second and seven. 
Oh my goodness, and they just put us under under another severe thunderstorm. Well, just to watch now. We had warnings earlier, of course, when it hit. But boy, this was all supposed to blow out of here. Now it looks like next round is coming in. We'll see. Keep an eye on the weather. They fake it to Finley. Nice throw. Good catch. First down, Pioneers. Cole with another completion. But I tell you, the defender was right there for the pride. Parsons' pass was able to just clear his fingertips. And that's good for another so Kolb is going to come off the field. Pioneers, I would wager a guess. Might try and run the ball here. Starting to air it out more, though. Yep, they fake it to Finley. Out to Himes. Two people there. He's able to move forward for a few yards. The defense was on him instantly as soon as he caught the ball. See where they're going to place this. I think we're on the 29-yard line. No. No, no. Sorry, sorry. Ignore me. 24. Another play action pass. Looking, looking. Parsons swings out left. Has a man wide open. He's got one to beat to the end zone. Makes a miss. Oh. Defender is able to come over. Stopped one yard short. But a great throw, great catch. That was out there to Jacob Tett. Well, they said Himes. No, I think that was Tett. I'm right. PA announcer's wrong. Go me. Parsons quickly snaps. They get it to Finley. Finley into the pile. Waiting for the call. Official sprinting in. I think he's short. But this is going to bring up second and in inches. Let's see. Number one written for. Let's see. Number one, Mark Edwards from Clark University. Number 20 of the Pride from Sedalia, Missouri. And then let's go number seven, Jordan. Okay. Uh, player down. Player shaken up for the Pride. So the trainers are going to come out and check on him. Pioneers are going to get a little bit of a water break out of this. 3.46 remaining before halftime. 21 nothing. Visiting Clark on top. But the Pioneers a mere yard away from getting onto the scoreboard. Credit to all the fans who have come out today, the MNU folks. Again, having to wait through the storm delay. They have packed the stands here at the Olathe District Activity Center. ODAC, if you will. We have had very good attendance here this year, which is good to see. Just wait until we're on our, our own school in our own stadium. It's going to be awesome. Can you tell I'm excited about that? I'm excited about that. All right, leave me alone. I'm alive. Been calling games out here for eight years. I want to do one at the, at the school. It's going to be fun. Let's see here. Number 70 watching from New York. Go Pride. Emory team. Malachi Harris from Miami. See, I think I said Mark Edwards. Richmond, California. All right. Boy, Clark, you guys are all over the country, aren't you? You guys are everywhere. Player's still down for Clark. Trainers are still out there. He's he's hurting. Again, if their uniforms were not so difficult to read from all the way up here in the box, I would tell you who it is. But I cannot see that number. All right, now able to leave the field under his own power, so that's good to see. Oh, now not even leaving the field. Going to stay in. Thought after an injury stoppage, you were at least forced to leave for one play. Maybe not the guy. Oh, now he is. Okay. Think, think you were obligated to leave for a play after an injury stoppage, but I could be wrong. It's happened before. All right, big play here for the Pioneer offense. Second and one. Still in the shotgun. Man in motion. They fake the sweep. Finley able to shed the first tackler and take it in for a Pioneer touchdown. Finley off the right side of the line. Again, able to go through initial contact. Player had him behind the line, but not able to drag him down. And Finley goes forward into the end zone. And the Pioneers are on the board with 3.34 remaining in the second quarter. It is now 21-6, pinning the extra point. And 
Pioneers one man short on the special teams unit. He's trotting onto the field as we are about ready. Now the Pride making a substitution late. We all good? Everyone good? Down to three on the play clock. Good snap, good placement. The kick is up. And the extra point is good. So with that, it is now 21 to 7, 334 remaining. Pioneer defense really needs to answer the bell here. So here's the best case scenario for the Pioneers. Defense forces a three and out. Pioneers can score something before half because the Pioneers will receive the ball to begin the third quarter. So you're hoping for any kind of, you know, two points or two scores swing here. Heck, even two field goals would feel great right now after this first half that the Pioneers have had. Two quick touchdowns, and we're right back in this, and it's a new game, but, you know, I'm optimistic. So, again, the Pioneers are going to be kicking into the wind. So the Pride got to be ready. They have, they've got their return men all the way up at the 10-yard line. Hoping for a good return on this, which can happen. Oh, the Pioneers showing them maybe a little pooch kick here. Looks like they're just going to try and chip this. Indeed, they do. Not going to give Clark much of a chance for a return. It goes out of bounds at the 30. And so flag is down. Illegal procedure. And I believe... They'll get the ball at the 35. Waiting for the official's call. Okay. It is five yards in front of the spot where it went out of bounds. So the ball now placed at the 38-yard line. So not bad. Not a bad good starting spot. Oh, there we go again from last week. Cam Run Finley with the touchdown for the Pioneers. Tell me, that's got to get on a T-shirt. Somebody, somebody has to make that happen. Dropping back to pass. Pressure and sacked. Best sack of the day for the Pioneers. That was unblocked. Anthony Sal. Just a free run at the quarterback. And so after that sack, the Pioneers are going to call a timeout. Like I said, the best case scenario is a three and out. And that's a good start when you can get that kind of a sack on the first play. Well, I tell you, the quarterback never saw him coming either. Okay, here we go. We got a shout out for a coach, Coach Benton. All right, we got a replay coming up. Take a look at this sack. All right, I, I, you know, I said he came back unblocked. Nope, they just couldn't block him. And Sal able to put him down. Oh, my. That hurt me, and I'm all the way up here in the stands. Well, in the booth. Protected by walls and a roof. And that still hurt. This, this, this might be the craziest insult I've ever heard. Clark fans eat deer ankles. Need a turnover, go nears. Deer ankles? I, ch I don't know if I would take that from you. Here's a pass outside. Oh, my, and another great tackle by the Pioneer defense. They're a little fired up right now. This is William Hankins. It's the pass. And another timeout called. This pass was completed behind the line and immediately tackled. So now I think a third and 15 coming up for Clark. The Pioneers call another timeout with 3.18 remaining in the half, and they just need one more big stop here. And if they give up much on this third down play, you, you could probably bet that Clark is going to go for it. If they have not trotted the punt unit out one time today. All right, quick timeout. Both sides heading back out onto the field. Big third down for both sides right here. 
and I can see we're going to have some halftime entertainment as the marching band is heading towards the field. So we'll make sure we leave the microphone on for that. All right, dropping back. Pressure comes. Pass is thrown. What a catch. Short of the first down, but now it is going to be fourth and decision time. That was a great catch. Oh, there's a flag on the play. Let's see what this is about. Oh, a roughing the passer. So 15 yards at the end of the catch is going to put Clark way into Pioneer territory. And I'm going to be 100% honest. I didn't see it. I was watching the ball and watching the receiver. I did not see what happened in the backfield. So I cannot even wager my own personal opinion as to the legitimacy of that call. But they also don't care what the broadcasting guy says. So the ball at the 40-yard line, first and 10. Two great defensive plays for the Pioneer, all for naught at this point. Now here's a run up the middle. And taken down for a short loss, one-yard loss on this. This was Elmore, who just w he tried to bounce it outside. I don't know if he was losing his footing, but just didn't seem to have the same kind of movement he's had earlier. But Pioneers now with their one timeout. All right, and again, now Clark, they don't need to be in any hurry whatsoever unless they're trying to put more points on the board before half. They're going to take the snap. A little stretch play left. And through the first level, into the second level, and another helmet goes flying off. I see a helmet fly. I think it's a ball. Nope, not a ball. So Elmore loses his lid. But that was a good carry. It's going to bring up third and short. So the ball on the 33-yard line. As we are tick, tick, ticking down, almost to two minutes remaining in the half. Third and three. Quarterback drops back. Pressure comes late. Great throw, great catch. Elevating, able to come down with it. That was completed to Jackson Ostrander. And so that moves the chains. Clock still ticking. Both sides have one timeout remaining. With the wind at their back, I would say that Clark already in field goal range. Should have come down to that. Now they're going to run up the middle. Trying to spin off to the left side and met by the Pioneer defense. Knocked down. So Mimes, I think, is going to get about four yards on that play. No hurry being shown. Minute 15. Clark getting into position. Snap, turn, right side handoff. And just diving forward. Two-yard gain. This was Elmore. So Huff credited with the tackle. Ball on the 16-yard line. And, yeah, it looked like the quarterback jumped. I was actually surprised there, were no, there was no flag. But, yeah, the quarterback kind of jumped early on that. Unless they call it on someone else. But that's what I saw. But the official's going to run over and have a word with the coach for Clark. So maybe I'm wrong. When is this call? I hear a lot of people in the booth saying, what happened? I, I agree. What is this? And now he's going to come have a word with the Pioneer sideline. Maybe we're just checking on after game plans. Where are we going for dinner? <laughs> We've hit the Jeopardy music. You have no clue what this is about. Because, again, going to both coaches. I wonder if there's a runoff situation on accepted penalties. All right, here's a false start on the quarterback. I was right. Clock at 
Okay. So because of the penalty, during a moving clock, under a minute remaining, Clark could choose to avoid a 10-second runoff by using the timeout. They declined. MNU accepted the penalty, and they chose not to enforce the 10-second runoff. So the clock doesn't move. It's moving now. And five yards backwards goes Clark, third and nine on the 21. We're getting there. We're getting there. All right, snap, pass, over the middle. Oh, just a drop, a flat drop. Oh, boy. The receiver's going to want that back. Oh, my. I thought I thought we were in a world of trouble there, not going to lie. Jaquan Graham had it, had the first down. With one move would have been in the end zone, and it just falls to the turf. Hmm. So with that incomplete pass, the clock stops with 20 seconds remaining. Fourth and nine, and here is the field goal unit for Clark. And they've got the wind at their back. That will help. Good placement. Kick is up. It's blocked by the Pioneers. The ball is loose on the field. Picked up. It's a foot race in the end zone. And now taken out of bounds around the 40-yard line. The Pioneer special teams comes up with a huge block. Again, they might get one shot here at the end zone. Maybe. So the ball is going to be placed, where is this? At the 39-yard line in Clark territory. I don't know. I think you try and get, you got to try and get maybe, you got time for two plays because you still have one timeout. So I would say try and get close. I don't think you're going to get all the way to the end zone on this play. Parsons dropping back, looking, looking. Steps forward in the pocket. Slings it out wide. Has a man. And they're going to get a little, not a lot. And four seconds remain. Timeout called. So you're not in field goal range. At least I don't think. Unless we've just got an absolute missile launcher for a leg on the sideline. The ball's going to be placed on the 35. So we're on the 35-yard line. We got the block. All right, let's see the block here. Oh, look at that field view. Perfect. Coming in. Taking a great return right here. There was one to beat. Able to knock him down. But wow, that was a that was a great block by the Pioneer special teams. Well done. So again, four seconds remaining. I don't think you can kick a field goal from here. So can the Pioneers dial something up? And again, they're throwing into the wind. So I don't even know if you're going to get the ball into the end zone through the air. Boy, long time out. Pioneers have not broken their huddle yet. The Pride are on the field. They're only going to have three down linemen. They're sending everyone back in the secondary. And again, the Pioneer, okay, so yeah, the Pioneer offense coming onto the field. And there was no way they were going to make a field goal from here. They're going to put four receivers on the right side, one on the left. So only the linemen protecting, no extra help. So Parsons is going to have to be very aware of the rush. Low snap. Here comes the rush, and Parsons is nailed. Boy, what did I say? What did I say? Nice snack. Uh, nice snack. You can tell I'm hungry. We'll get to that in the second half. Nice sack, and that will end the first half. Hernandez able to come through with the sack. And that's going to do it. We're at halftime. It is 21-7. Clark all over MNU. One half done. MNU will get the ball to start the third quarter. So that's where we'll pick up in 20 minutes. Come back in about, eh, I don't know, 17, 18 minutes. We'll bring you all the first half stats before we get started with second half action. So go ahead and refill your beverage, grab yourself another snack, order yourself a pizza, send one up to me in the booth, and we'll be back in about 17 minutes.
the Bachelor of Arts in International Agribusiness, Third World Development, and an MBA in 1994. Our recipient joined Heart to Heart International as one of its original staff and over the next 17 years served in various roles and became its chief executive officer in 2001. Under his leadership, Heart to Heart International became one of the most recognized health and disaster relief agencies in the world. But it was love for this university that drew him back to MNU and the position of Vice President for University Advancement in 2010. Please join me in congratulating the 2023 Administrator of the Year, Dr. John Nord, Vice President of University Advancement. Our final recognition today is the 2023 Pioneer Pride Award. Each year we have an opportunity to recognize a member of our campus community whose leadership and service inspires us all. Some who we have recognized work effectively behind the scenes and there are others like our recipient today whose leadership touches and impacts the entire campus and community life. Our Pioneer Pride recipient is a 2001 graduate of MNU with a degree in communications. In 2008, a Master's of Divinity from the Nazarene Theological Seminary. And in 2017, the Doctor of Ministry degree at Fuller Theological Seminary. Upon graduating from MNU, our recipient enjoyed a short career in insurance and joined the university in September 2001 as an admissions counselor. In 2003, the role changed to resident educator and director of discipleship ministry. Then in 2009, director of spiritual life. In 2016, our recipient was appointed university chaplain where he continues to serve. The recipient of the Pride, the Pioneer Pride Award tells students God's plan is not beyond reach. We can do this together. Those words are not only applicable to students, but resonate in his ministry to all of us. Our Pioneer Pride as recipient for 2023 is Dr. Brady Bratz, university chaplain. One more round of applause for these individuals that make a great impact on our campus. All right, welcome back, everybody. Hopefully you can hear me at this point, which I'm sure you can. Get back to your computers or your screens or wherever you're streaming from. We're about ready to go. All right, <clears throat> excuse me. The offense for Pride in that first half. Boy, they had a good one. Williams was 12 for 18 for 209 yards and a touchdown. Of course, he had that one 86-yard bomb, which is always helpful. Receiving, Wire had four receptions for 127 yards and a touchdown. And then on the ground, it was Elmore, 16 carries for 63 yards. Over for the Pioneers. Parsons, 8 for 16 there in that first half for 85 yards. Sacked twice, no touchdowns. Receiving, let's see, Taylor leads the way. He has two, two for 24 yards. And then Parsons, he's actually leading and rushing, three for seven. Oh, no, I'm sorry, no, he's not Cherry. Cherry is four for 13. And then Finley, three for five, but he has the one touchdown for the Pioneers. No turnovers for Clark in that first half. The Pioneers lost one fumble. So it's never what you want. All right, let's see. Yeah, time of possession really was controlled by Clark. They had 16 first downs in the first half. Pioneers only had seven. Trying to look for any good stats. It looked like a lot of fun. Nothing. The scoreboard really kind of shows how close this has been so far. Mm -mm -mm. Yep, oh boy, there is no way to make this game sound all that exciting. Really exciting if you're a Clark fan. Pioneers have a lot of work to do. They will start the second half with the ball. You know, assuming there's no disaster that strikes on the opening kickoff. But settle in, we're about ready to get going here in about 10 seconds. And both sides getting to their sideline after getting warmed back up and special teams will head on onto the field. Now you guys are gonna hear, and there's absolutely nothing I can do about it. One of the businesses close by has an alarm going off, so you're gonna hear the horn. Because I can hear it, you're gonna hear it, and there's nothing we can do about it. So hopefully it stops here at some point in time. All right, let's see, here's some people 
we're kind of uh, catching up with us here. We've got another Clark fan in Florida. We've got another one from Malachi Harris. I think we've got everyone caught up. But thank you, everyone, for participating. Good, good to know where you're from. Wow. Our PA announcer just got really loud. Whoa. Gordy is super excited. All right, let's go. Clark is ready. Special teams are lined up. And the kick, we're underway. Short kick as it got up into the air. Pioneers having to sprint to get underneath it. Fielded at the 20. Trying to bounce outside. Makes one miss. Makes two miss. Still moving up to the 40. And now drug out of bounds. Good return for the Pioneers. Ooh, but I see some dirty laundry on the field. There's a flag down. Let's see who this is on. A good return by the Pioneers. Will it hold? Oh, this is a face mask on Clark. So 15 yards at the end of the run. So this is going to be extremely beneficial for the Pioneers. Now here in the third quarter, the Pioneers will have the wind at their back. And again, it's a, it's a pretty stiff breeze. Again, we're back under a severe weather watch right now. That has not expired yet. So who knows if and when weather rears its ugly head against, again today. This has been a strange one, but Parsons under center. I think the wind is picking up, actually. Ball is at the 45-yard line. Cherry's going to take it off the right side. Runs into a wall, trying to move the pile. Now the play is finally blown dead. Sean Cherry, the ball carrier. And Cherry's able to come up with two on that first down carry. Tackle made by number nine, Israel Hernandez. So Israel Hernandez credited with the tackle. Quick snap, throwing to Cherry out of the backfield. Has a blocker, couldn't quite get around though. This is gonna be a short gain. It looked like he had a lot of green, but credit to the defense of Clark. They were able to bring him down, shed the blocker, get the tackle before Cherry could really get a lot, get a lot going on that play. Third and seven. Pioneer offense still struggling on moving. Now the Pioneers went with that hard count. Look to the sideline, get their play. Parsons with it, dropping back. Pressure comes. He quickly throws it out of the backfield. Cherry's got a first down. Tried for a little more along the sideline. So that ball is going to be spotted at the 29-yard line, so definitely enough to move the chains for the Pioneer offense. They keep the opening drive of the third quarter moving right along. So during halftime, I did step out of the booth. It is getting warm out there. And we knew the temperature was going to spike. And so it is hot. Anytime that sun is shining, you know down on that AstroTurf, it's even hotter. So it, it's toasty today. It does not feel like a fall day, even though this is the first day of fall. Happy first day of fall, everyone. Himes with it. Sheds one. Couldn't make the second man miss, but a first down for the Pioneers. On a quick throw out to the right side, and Himes able to come up with it. And that ball is going to be down right at the 15-yard line. I don't know, 17. Shows what I know. Pioneers quickening the pace here. Cherry again off the right side. Ooh, cuts it inside. Nifty little move, and he's got enough for the first down. Best carry of the day for Cherry. As he was going right and just, I mean, slides it into the left. Pioneers quickly going again. Cherry again right side. They think they might have found something. This time, though, not as much success. And a late flag comes flying in. What do we have here? I mean, that play was well over. Referees all conferring. We'll see what the white hat comes up with. I can't even venture a guess as to what this was. Again, the flag came in so late. I didn't see any pushing or shoving or extracurricular activities after the play. So it had to have been something during. Are they going to pick this up, maybe? Three fouls for the play. 
three? Okay. 12 men on the field for Clark. And then offsetting on sportsman likes. Okay, so Mark Edwards the fourth gets an unsportsmanlike penalty, as does Arlandis Mitchell. <coughs> Excuse me, as my voice gives out. So those are both of their first unsportsmanlike. You know, two and you get ejected. So those offset each other. So the 12 men on the defense is the enforced penalty, and that moves the Pioneers almost down to the goal line. So second and three. Pioneers three yards away from drawing closer. Again, talk about a touchdown they desperately need. Quick throw into the end zone, incomplete. Another one through the hands of the receiver. Himes not able to collect. The way this game is going, you're going to feel real disappointed, Pioneers fans, if they settle for a field goal attempt. They have got to put this in just to trail by one touchdown. And Pioneers are confused right now on their substitution situation. And they've got to figure it out now, down to 13 on the play clock. Incomplete pass, so the game clock has stopped. Parsons sends a man in motion. Now, timeout called by the bench of the Pioneers. That whole thing looked broken. So the coach wisely wants to talk this over. So early stages in the third quarter, and now the Pioneer is already down a timeout. See if that comes back to haunt them later, as they're trying to just make this a one-score game. Special thanks to our game day sponsor, Olathe Ford Lincoln, where they specialize in market value pricing. A proud partner of... So we got another one in. So you come on, Eldon Haynes, number 70, Brooklyn's finest. Go Pride. Back in 2021, I was in New York, did the New York Marathon, ran through Brooklyn. Oh, that place was awesome. They were electric. All right, both sides heading back out on the field. Big play coming up for the Pioneers. So it's second and goal. I'm sorry, they had not reset. It was first down after that penalty. So that was first and three. Incomplete pass, second and goal now. Ooh, Pioneer sent two men in motion. One had to stop. Don't want to get hit with any penalty. Up the middle, Cherry. I think he's in. Does he have it? Touchdown, Pioneers. Cherry again off the right side, which is where the Pioneers have been doing a lot of their work between guard and tackle. He goes through the hole, cuts it left, and is able to fall into the end zone for another Pioneer touchdown. Getting the game closer, 21-13 now, pinning the extra point. And this is a big extra point coming up right here for the Pioneers. Again, just a trail by seven. Having trailed 21-0 in this game. Bad snap. Good placement, though. Kick is up, and the kick is good. That snap was low, skipped in there. But the holder was able to collect, able to get it placed. Good kick. So with that, we're 21-14. Still tons of time left in this ball game. We're going to see just how interesting this can get coming down the stretch. Now the special teams are getting lined up, and again the Pioneers with the wind at their back. And see if they can't sail this into the end zone, I imagine. Avoid any kind of return opportunity. Let's just not do what we did last time and kick it out of bounds. Pioneers look like they are ready to send this away. And boom. There it goes. Oh, they might return. No. Bounces into the end zone. And that's going to be a touchback. Let's 
All right, and this will be the first offensive possession for Clark here in the second half of action. Clark able to move the ball very well throughout the whole first half. And again, they control time of possession by a lot. It wasn't even close. You have to see if they have the same luck. All right, Clark quickly ready to go. And they're going to hand it off to start this half. Able to spin away from the line. I think this is Elmore again. Indeed it is. Elmore with the carry. Craig Elmore, the ball carrier. Tackle made by number 23, Elias Carson. Elmore's going to come off the field again. It's, it's hot. Second it's hot down there. The and Elmore carried... A lot of that load in the first half, so we'll see how much he's used here in the second half. And another run up the middle. This time angling left. This will be enough for the first down by about a yard. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And right now, Clark just looking like they're going to run this right down the defense throat. High snap, play action pass now, looking left along the sideline, and a flag is thrown, boy. Officials might want to take another look. That looked very uncatchable to me, but there was definitely contact between wide receiver and defensive back. And that is going to be a holding call on the Pioneers. I think you guys can hear it in my microphone, the wind howling out there. It's picking up. As long as the storms stay away. Ooh, Pioneers almost jumped, able to hold. And here's a big hit. Oh, boy, way, way to pull up. And now there's just contact all over the place. No call. There was a lot of contact between defensive back and wide receiver. No flag. Again, another one I would have deemed uncatchable. And credit to the Pioneer defender. Their quarterback was about to get blown up, but he got the ball away, and so our defender peeled off. I thought we were going to have a big hit right there. All right, so after all that, a very busy, incomplete pass play. It's second and ten. And they're going to hand off left side. Oh, got stopped by his own offensive lineman. I think this was Mimes, and he runs right into the back of his offensive lineman. He's able to get five yards on the play. Would have had a lot more, but bounced off his own man and then gets taken down. It's third and five coming up. Tackle made by number four, Hamilton Staten. There we go. Another fan in here. Kentucky this time for Keyshawn Murphy. I'm telling you, you, you pride people are all over the country. Been checking in from everywhere. Third and five, ball on the 45, 49, sorry. Dropping back to pass. Over the middle. What a catch. Boy, that looked like a great catch in between two Pioneer defenders. And indeed it was. Threading the needle and coming up with the catch was Graham. What, did they mark him short? They sure did. Fourth and one. I'm sorry, I thought that was enough to move the chains. That's what I get for thinking. So fourth and one, big play coming up. And, of course, back into the game is Craig Elmore. And looks like Elmore, is he lined up? They've got two running backs back there, the quarterback not on the field. So this is going to be a direct snap to a running back. They've got it. And, ooh, that's enough. That, that's enough by a yard. That was close. Thomas Mimes, the ball carrier. So Mimes, the ball carrier there, he comes up with the first down. Not by a lot. But it doesn't have to be a lot. He got the first. So that's first down. Quarterback back onto the field. Two receivers left, one right. Say, so watch the handoff up the middle. Indeed. Pioneers defense is there. That's going to be no gain. 
So knocked down at the line. Elmore not able to come up with much on that play. Tackle made by number seven, Marcos Flores. Flores with the tackle. Heard his name a lot today. He's been all over it. Now slowing the pace. Clark ready. And they're going to play action pass, setting up a screen. A lot of space in front. Oh, way to close in, though, by the Pioneers. This is going to be for a minimal gain. Could have been a lot worse. The one defensive back of the Pioneers was able to make the wide receiver spin, kind of spun into some help there. So that could have been a lot worse. Third and medium distance coming up. Third and six is what we're going to call it. Watch any uh, design quarterback keeper on this. He's going to drop back. Pressure comes. Coming up the middle. Now he steps forward and taken down from behind. Pioneer's defense was able to close in and shut that play down. And that is Jonathan Brown who was able to come in and get that sack. And that's going to bring up fourth down. And this is the... The first time I see the punt unit coming on for Clark. Again, the Pioneers trail by one. It's 21-14. And this is the first punt attempt. But again, will I be surprised if this is some kind of trick play or a fake? I will not. I will not be surprised at all. Again, he does not have, there's not one single punt attempt by Clark today. So why would this be the first? Pi Ooh, Pioneers brought the heat. Punt gets away. Fair catch called for it and granted taken at about the nine-yard line. So the Pioneers are going to have a long way to go. And now a Pioneer injury. But it looks like William, no, I'm sorry. This is Brown, K.J. Brown was shaken up on the play, but leaves the field quickly under his own power. And the Pioneers could tie this game up, but they've got a long way to go to do it. Wind at their back for another 7 minutes and 14 seconds here in the third quarter. All right, Parsons. Two wide receivers to his right, running back in the backfield with him. Looks like they're going to bring pressure. Play action pass. He's looking to air it out, going a long way down the field. What a catch! What a catch, and he's on his way. This is going to be a Pioneer touchdown into the hands of Orlandis Mitchell. Touchdown, Pioneers. Parsons put all the air that he could underneath that ball. And Parsons, what a catch. What a run. Mitchell just runs right underneath it. He hasn't, and he was gone. So here's your replay coming up right here. Look at Parsons throwing it right at you. So that 90-yard touchdown completion ties for an MNU record for the longest touchdown completion in school history. 90 yards. So the Pioneers right now only trailing by an extra point. Good snap, good placement, kick is up, and the kick is good. And with 7.02 remaining in the third quarter, we have a brand spanking new ball game as we're all knotted up at 21 apiece. Yeah, the Pioneers trailed 21-0 earlier in this game and have come storming back in the late stages of the second quarter and now the beginning of the third. So Clark is going to need to look for an answer as the Pioneers are coming, and they have all the momentum right now after a 90-yard bomb. And we're going to give all the credit to broadcaster guy, right, who said, wind at your back, see if they're going to air it out. And, yep, mm -hmm, yep, see, mm-hmm. I, I, I take no credit, but it's fun to throw out there. All right, well, the folks here at the Olathe District Activity Center fired up. Everyone riding high right now. Again, 7.02 remaining. Can Clark come back with an answer? 
Their last possession was their first punt of the game. And big kick, sailing, sailing. Fielded at the one, here they come. Making one miss, not gonna make the other. This is gonna be down. I'd say forward progress has them right at the 20-yard line, and indeed it does. So that is where the Pride are going to take over for offense is on the 20. You gotta imagine the Pioneer defense is gonna be pretty fired up right now. Offensive Clark just has to weather this storm. And were I them, and I'm certainly not, I'm giving the ball to Elmore and just let him try and hammer this one home for a while. There's a snap, there's Elmore. Oh boy, the Pioneer defense swallows him up. That's a loss. Loss of two on the play. And this is why I don't call plays, because I was wrong. Tackle on the play made by number 55, Calvin Broussard. Change being made on the offensive line. New right guard checks in, so I wonder if that's injury related. 620, play clock down to 10. Again, Clark in no hurry. Not panicking, dropping back. Pressure coming, rolling out and sacked. Corner blitz comes up with a sack on the play. And like I said, the Pioneers have, they have all the momentum right now. Pritchard comes in backside and is able to bring the quarterback down for a big loss, third and 20 coming up. Substitutions being made now for Clark. Pioneers changing around some personnel as well. Expecting, of course, any kind of a long pass play right here. Ball's on the 11-yard line, so Clark is deep in their own territory. They're going to empty the backfield. Man goes out into the flat. They've got him covered. Pressure on the backside again. Here they come, and down he goes. Sacked at the 5-yard line. And Kariuk. Able to come up with that sack, and here comes the punt unit. Again, ball on the five-yard line, fourth and 26, kicking into the wind. This is not where you want to be if you are rooting for Clark right now. This is rough. Any kind of a bad snap right now could lead to disaster. He does not have a lot of room to work with. You know the Pioneers are going to be starting this possession, again, barring a problem. Blocked, no, yes, it skips away. Now the Pioneer picks it up already at the 35. So I was trying to see what happened there. I think they got a piece of that punt. And it still goes forward, scraping along the ground. But the Pioneers are gonna start this well into Clark territory. The 34 yard line is where the Pioneer offense is gonna take over. Yeah, what a turn of events. This has just been a wild quarter right now. See what the Pioneers can do here. Can they take their first lead of the day? This is the possession where it could happen. A great starting field position. Parsons fakes the handoff. He's looking, looking right, looking right. Throws it towards the right sideline. Has a man at the first down marker. Now he brings himself behind it again. Gets popped, stays on his feet. Still moving all the way across the field. Tries to cut inside. Now he's going to be wrestled down. Not going to have the first down because of bringing himself back behind the line. But a heck of a run <laughs> after the catch. I don't know if yards after catch count when you're going side to side, but Mitchell, he wanted it. He was doing anything he could to find space. So second and three coming up for the Pioneer offense. And now Finley with it. Finley left side. Uh, has the first down. I feel comfortable in saying that. Has it by a yard. So on second and three, Finley able to bring it across for the first down. Fresh set of downs and now a lineman down for the Pioneers. And so this is an injury timeout as the lineman is going to get checked on. All 
All right, so with that, as they're going to check on the linemen, and we have 3.42 remaining in the third quarter. So it's 21-21. The wind has kind of died down. Clouds are returning. Like I said, we could have more weather. We'll see. There we go. Able to get to his feet under his own power. Now he's coming off unassisted. So good for the Pioneers there. Hopefully he'll be returned to the field. This is William Petty. And Petty has been lining up a lot today in the tight end position, you know, kind of clearly as a blocking tight end. But has really been trying to help spring these Pioneer running backs. Comes off limping again. Cramps could always be an issue. I know I've said it before. I'll say it again. Probably not my last time saying it. You never know. All right, but play is ready to resume. In 3.37 remaining, the play clock is going. Now the clock resumes. Himes comes off the field. Three wide receivers on for the Pioneers. And Finley remains in the backfield. Tight end goes in motion, working to the left side. And Finley has it, working left side. Able to bang forward. Come up with a pretty, pretty good gain on first down. See if he's about halfway there. Yeah, they're going to give him four in that play. Second and six coming up. Pioneers now not in any hurry. Again, driving down, potentially scoring the go-ahead score, whatever that might be. Trying to take time off the clock. Ooh, Finley again, but this time he's in trouble. Boy, he's trying to keep moving forward, though. Forward progress might have him back to the original line of scrimmage, maybe to the line of scrimmage. Nope, they're going to mark him back. Loss of one. So third and seven, ball on the 20. Tackled by a pride. I, I see what you did there. All right, Parsons dropping back. Empty backfield. Looking left. Steps forward. Ooh, knocked over the middle. Flag, though. Flag is down. This was knocked away by the pride defense. And the pride seemed pleased with what is soon to be called, I imagine, a hold on the Pioneers as the Pioneers start marching backwards. Again, waiting for the official. Seeing if they want to accept, not accept. Holding. Holding. All right, we're going to replay third down after accepting the 10-yard penalty. Ball now placed at the 30-yard line. Pioneers need to get all the way down to the 13 for a first down. So at this point, maybe you're hoping to get a little closer for a field goal attempt. I mean, I'd love to say we'll get all those yards, but eh. Parsons over the middle to the previous line of scrimmage and nothing more than that. And now thrown to the turf, but I don't think this is going to warrant anything, nor should it. So Mitchell comes up with the catch, gets the Pioneers closer. I'd say this is going to be a, a reasonable field, field goal attempt with two minutes remaining in the third quarter. And here comes the field goal unit. Fourth down coming up. All right, this is a big play right here. Remember, Clark had a field goal blocked. Ooh, bad snap. Good placement, though. Kick is up. Kick is good. Great job to hit from deep. So with that, the Pioneers are now enjoying their very first lead of the game. Highly able to come up with that long field goal for three. It's 24-21. Well, I told you guys earlier we we're going to have an exciting end to this game. It looks like we're still correct on that. 133 remaining in the third. 24-21. Clark is only going to be thrown into the wind for another couple minutes. Then they will flip the field. We'll see if they decide to air it out. Okay, so should you choose to participate? The other thing I enjoy doing with the YouTube chat room. All right, it's Sunday. Or Sunday. It's Saturday. It's football day. Your favorite game day snack or your favorite game day food. What are you guys doing today? Do you like ordering the pizza? 
Are you cooking out? Are you on the barbecue? What do you got? Hit me in the YouTube chat, your favorite game day food. Here's a low line drive kick by the Pioneers. And this will be a decent return as it got to the return man quickly. Nice hole opens up for him. Now taken down near the 25, probably around the 26, 27. That is where Clark will take over. But yeah, see, we're, we're at the point in the game where I'm starting to get hungry, so I like to talk about food. I mean, probably doesn't help my hunger issue, but we'll talk about food anyway. So what's your favorite game day food? Hit us. Ooh, hot dog and burgers. I'm in on that. Walking tacos. That might be the first I've gotten a walking tacos. Wings. Yep, there we are. There, there we are. Oh, I love some wings. All right, here we go. Clark now. Two wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Running back stays in the backfield. They're going to hand this off. Elmore got the edge. Oh, you can't just shoulder pop him. That didn't work out well for the Pioneers. First down and moving the chains was Elmore. Pioneers just tried to shoulder pop him out of bounds. That didn't work. Tight end goes in motion, goes to the right side. See if they're going to run it in that direction. If he's going to block, indeed. Trying to cut back left is Elmore. He runs away from all the pine. Oh, my goodness. Well, every time I think this guy's going down on this, he doesn't. He just he just bounced off four Pioneer defenders. And he left the game a little earlier. Didn't quite see him himself. Well, he's back. He's going to get a breather after these two big runs. And Mimes comes back in. Again, he's not exactly a small running back himself. What do we show Mimes as? No, I'm curious. Thomas Mimes, 5'10", 245. So these are two thunderous running backs that they have. Now Mimes bounce it left. And he has a first down. So Clark is answering. This drive is impressive, and it's all been on the ground. They're two big running backs doing the work here on this one. And this is going to bring us to the end of the third quarter. So in the third quarter, we're going to flip the field as Clark is now driving. The Pioneers have taken their first lead of the day. But Clark says, nay, nay, we do not feel you should have this lead. We're going to take it back. And they are heading deep into Pioneer territory. So we're going to see what happens here in the fourth quarter. Catch up with our food conversation. Chicken wings are, right, let's see, chicken wings today. Chicken sandwiches, homemade. Oh, yes. Uh, where is the game? We're at the Olathe District Activity Center in Olathe, Kansas. Home of the Mid-American Nazarene University Pioneers. And again, thank you for joining us here on the Pioneer Sports Network. Hopefully everyone's having a good time, both schools. At least we've had a good game today. Ooh, what is this? A 5K run walk at the MNU campus. Color me interested. Uh, sorry about that. I, I see the chat there that our scoreboard is red. I've seen our production people kind of running back and forth. I think we're having a little bit of problem with the graphic, which does not automatically update itself. We have to do that manually, so we're working on it. Sorry about that. We've had nothing but problems today. Again, if you're joining us late, we had storms roll in earlier, right before game time, that just wreaked havoc on the production. Now here's Mimes again. Great run. And he is just pushing the entire crowd. So again, I will try and do my best to update a little more on time, down and distance. Again, I know that the graphics sometimes is off. Again, production after a storm has been tricky. Uh, right now, we are for, uh, no, we're not first and 10. See, we're having problems everywhere. But we're at 1430 remaining. We're in the fourth quarter. So fourth quarter action now. Ball's on the 34. There's the snap. And they're handing off again. This time, the Pioneer defense is there. But wow, Elmore still stays on his feet. What should have been a loss is a small gain, as he was just not to be denied. And so third down coming up. 
But this is going to be third and short. Maybe third and four. If I'm reading the placement correctly. Pioneers looking for a stop here. Again, third and four. Clark, though, has shown no problems going for it on fourth down. So the third down means little. Design quarterback keeper. Drops back. Pressure comes. Nope. Throws over the middle. Has a man. Good catch. That's enough for the first down. And Ostrander comes up with another big third down completion. That is definitely not his first of the day. Now, is this an injury? What's going on here? Elmore was just kind of down. No, he was just waiting for substitutions to be made. Just taking a pause for the cause. He's all right. So first and 10, ball on the 15-yard line. Clark on the doorstep. They're going to give it to Elmore. Elmore bounces right. Contact made. Uh-oh, uh-oh. A lot of people showing a fumble. No. Okay, official comes in, says that the play was dead. Ball, uh, ball carrier was down by contact. I just saw a lot of Pioneers starting to point the other way. I thought that ball might have come out. But the official quickly puts the kibosh on that. Says, nay, nay, the ball did not leave his possession. So second and seven, ball on the 12. 12-29 12 remaining in the ball game. Elmore remains in the backfield. And they're going to give it to Elmore again, working up the middle. Runs into a wall, and this time the defense equal to the task. They bring him down, and he's going to lose one yard on that carry. So second and seven is going to turn into third and eight. So if the Pioneers can come up with a stop here, it'll be an interesting to see what decision Clark tries to make. Do they want to keep this drive going and take the lead, or attempt to? Or will they be content with kicking a field goal and tying this game up? The game's within a game. All right, so, but again, it's third down. The Pioneers do need to come up with a stop. Any kind of a loss really makes it an interesting decision. If they get close, I imagine Clark will go for it. Dropping back, looking over the middle, flings it out, has a man over, shoots his target. Oh, he was there, had the step. Trying to fade in the back corner of the end zone, but it was just a little too strong was Williams. And quickly, it looks like the field goal unit heading out onto the field for Clark. They wasted no time sprinting onto the field, and the offense is now leaving. So... Clark looking to tie this up with 11.27 reigning in the ball game. This pretty straightforward kick doesn't look, doesn't look difficult. Lined up dead center of the field. Good snap, good placement. The kick is up, looks good from here. And the kick is good. So there we go, we are all tied up yet again at 24 apiece with 11.23 remaining in the ball game. I'm going to try and get my stats to update here. We'll see what's going on here after that drive. Told you our technology here is in a state of chaos. The Wi-Fi is much the same way as well. Come on. Come on, laptop. Work with me, baby. Work for me. Oh, boy. No, the stats don't want to work. All right. Sorry. Well, I tried. We'll see when it comes back up. So the pride. They are ready. And their kicker, way behind the ball. So he looks like he's going to try and put a lot of leg into this. Boom. Indeed, he does. And that is going to take a hop and go out of the end zone for a touchback. So the Pioneer offense will start on the 25-yard line. Again, now they've got the wind in their face. So we'll see how that affects the pass game. If it does, maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Yeah, our stat system is stuck at the start of the fourth quarter. Hopefully that will 
free up here soon. If everything worked perfect, we wouldn't know what to do with ourselves. There we go. Now it's updated. We'll have that here in just a second. Parsons ready. Going to give it to Cherry. Cherry trying to work up the field, but nope. And the pride defensive line right there waiting for him. Knock him down. No gain. So Williams right now is 15 for 23, 230 yards and a touchdown. But really on the ground, it's Elmore with 24 attempts, 100 yards, and one touchdown. I guess if you take away his losses, of which he's had a few, he's actually at 95 net yards, just so you know. Here's a quick pass out to the side. And a little two-person tackle elevated the Pioneer receiver and slammed to the turf. No call. But Mitchell able to hold on. That's going to bring up third and three. So big moment here for the Pioneer offense. Can the Pioneers keep this drive going? Tight end moves to the right side of the line. Play action pass, swinging it out wide, but Himes is not going to be close. Ooh, reaches forward. He's going to make it closer. But why we're doing a play behind the line of scrimmage, I don't know. I don't know. So third and one. Ooh, and here comes the punt unit. I'm sorry, fourth and one. Fourth and one, and here comes the punt unit. Surprised. I'm surprised. I thought we'd be going for it on this to keep this drive going here in this tie ball game. We can get 9.46 remaining. We're giving the ball back to the Pride right now. I'm not so sure about this, Clark. Huh, Clark, that worked. Trying to roll to the right. They get it away. Fair catch called for and fielded. So a good punt by the Pioneers. They uh, had a little roll out to the right. you got to wonder if maybe if there was a lane, if he might take off and go, trying to get that one yard. But good pressure by Clark. And now the Pride are going to have first and 10 ball placed on the 28-yard line. So that is where this drive begins for them. 9.25 remain in the ball game. Tied up, 24 apiece. And you got to think you're going to get a steady diet of Elmore right now since we're on the food subject. And they give it to Elmore. Big hole opens up. That was credit to his offensive line. I mean, even I had a chance of hitting that hole. Not nearly as quickly or as athletically, but I had a chance. So Flores with the tackle. Elmore already halfway to the first down marker. If you go back to the first quarter, and there, so there's nine minutes remaining in the ball game here. The Pride had to drive over for nine minutes. That led in a score. If they could just recreate that, then they walk away with a victory. Pioneers desperately need a stop somewhere in here. Now this, Elmore is not going to get there. See if they're even going to give him one on this. He just kind of falls forward. Craig Elmore, the ball and I don't think they're going to give him anything. I think it's going to bring up... A third and five. So here's another big play, of which there's been many. Third down for the Pioneers, third and five. In any kind of loss, I would imagine a punt comes, especially with the wind at their back. If they get closer, though, Clark, no problem going on fourth. We've said that at nauseum. Throws over the middle, has his man. First down on a slant over the middle. And that keeps the drive alive. Graham comes up with that catch. First and 10 from the 44 yard line. So ball's on the 44 yard line. First and 10 for Clark's offense. There's a the snap. They're going to give it to Elmore right side this time. He's able to get through. He's into the secondary. Has a first down. And now is wrestled down in Pioneer territory. And there's a Pioneer on the far sideline struggling to get to his feet. 
And so we're going to send the trainers over. Some trainers for Clark already on the scene. And we're going to see what's happening here. But we're going to take a moment, grab a breather on this injury. Let me go over here. I have not given Pioneer stats for a while. Let's see where we're at here with 7.25 remaining in the game. So this clock is ticking. This drive taking up a lot of time for Clark. And now they're able to get him to his feet. Again, I'd give you the stats quicker if they would load. There goes. So Parsons, he is 15 for 24, 225 yards and a touchdown. That's off that 90-yard catch. Mitchell, four receptions, 113 yards, the 90-yard bomb touchdown. And then rushing on the ground, uh, Cherry, eight attempts for 30 yards and a touchdown. Finley, six attempts, 13 yards and a touchdown. That's kind of where the Pioneer offense is at at the moment. All right, the, cl the clock resumes. Clark trying to take all the time they can. They're going to play action pass now. Pioneer defense is coming, and they bring him down behind the line. Ooh, ball comes out, but he definitely was down. They're going to whistle him down. Yep. You can see the ball kind of come squirting out at the end, but. So Kiryuk is able to come up with the, with the sack. Pioneer defensive lineman didn't hear the whistle blown, took the ball all the way to the end zone. Didn't need to do that. Now he's got to sub off the field. Second and 13 after that sack. Clark now going to hand it off right up the middle. This is Mimes. And he is knocked down, not back to the original line of scrimmage as of yet. So third and 11 coming up. Gets two yards on that carry. Another Flores tackle. <laughs> Listen to Gordy go. Here we go. Do it. I like it. All right, third and 11. Ball on the 45-yard line. The third third down production for Clark has been pretty amazing. They seem to convert definitely more often than not. Looking for a big conversion here. They send it over the middle. Got it. What a hit, but he's able to hold on, and that is a first down catch. Jaden Wire, he got completely 360 after catching this ball. But he holds on to it, and that is a first down. What did I say about the third down completions for Clark? Their conversion rate is automatic. That's a heck of a catch right there. Credit where credit's due. Wire, what a catch. My goodness. Again, slowing the pace. Play clock under 10, down to 7. There's the snap. There's Elmore. Elmore got spun in the backfield, now t wrestled down. He got spun all the way around. I think he got a little discombobulated there, trying to figure out where he was at and which way he needed to turn. The other pioneer on the scene able to wrestle him down. So a loss on that play. But, it, again, I don't know anything about the field goal kicker for Clark, but I would venture to say they're already within range. So 10 for 17 right now. That's the completion on, or the conversion rate on third down. 10 for 17. And now here's a nice throw. This is Ostrander. He comes up with the catch. And now a third down is very manageable. Third and, what are we at? Third and five. So Ostrander gets a conversion. So again, hey, we, we've said it. Third down, no big deal for the pride. And they've got a third and five right here. So they're probably thinking, oh, well, this is no big deal. You know, at third and 11, maybe we'll think think about it. It might sweat just a little bit, but third and five, psh, whatever. Here we go. Quarterback drops back. Corner blitz coming. Gets picked up. They're able to knock him off stride. He turns the corner. 
Scampers ahead. This is going to come down to placement. Is he going to be a... It's going to be a yard short. So fourth and one. Ooh, okay, here we go. Big decision time right here. And here comes the field goal unit. So fourth and one, ball on the 17-yard line. Clark is going to opt for the field goal attempt. So again, showing faith in their kicker. He's on the left hash mark. Down to five on the play clock. Low snap. They're able to get it. It's tipped at the line. No good. And the ball lands harmlessly in the end zone. And the Pioneers are going to pick that up. And nothing doing on that. So the field goal attempt is blocked. That's the second blocked field goal of the day for the Pioneers. And that keeps this game tied, 24-24, with 2.57 remaining in the ballgame. So, wow. That was a heck of a drive. Another good drive. It just stalled out. And Clark not able to hit on their field goal attempt. Though the Pioneers with 2.57, they still have a long way to go. And, again, they would be kicking into the wind. And you could see on the way that ball moved, that was a fingertip block. But it was enough. So what can the Pioneer offense do here? Can they finally get a nice, long, sustained drive going? Parsons drops back, steps forward. Pressure coming from behind. He gets hit, reaches forward. So they're going to give him, they're going to actually give him three on that play. That's kind. Four? Okay, even better. It's going to bring up second and six. Parsons had pressure coming from behind. I don't think he knew it was there. That's where fumbles happen. But the hit did not dislodge the ball. Parsons wisely reaching forward, trying to get as many yards as he can. Now second and six, ball on the 24-yard line. Clock is ticking with 225. Himes goes in motion. Now going around the formation. He's all alone at the top of your screen. Now he's going to come back. And, oh, they fake the screen to him. Go over the middle. Has a man. That's completed. Now down at the 45-yard line. Boy, everyone thought they was going to fling it out wide, myself included. But E.J. Rogers able to move forward and come up with that. First down catch. And the ball now five yards away from Clark Territory. That was a great misdirection play. They even had me fooled. Oh, and now a false start. Mm. That's a rally killer right there for the Pioneers. False start. They're going to move backwards five yards. All right, still first down, five yards. All right, see what the Pioneers have here. Two in the backfield with Parsons. They're going to send the tight end out. He's trying to air it out. This is against the wind. Into double coverage. Oh! There's contact incomplete. Oh, boy. Orlandis Mitchell was there. Got bumped a little by the safety, but nothing called. Ooh. Again, double coverage was there. Both the corner and the safety were on that play. Parsons was just trying to get it over everyone. And it was a little out of the reach of Mitchell. The home crowd really wanted that pass interference call. But don't they always? Second and 15. Parsons fakes it to Finley. Finley's going to stay in and block. Now they go left side. Great throw. Catch again. So, chipping away. The Pioneers are chipping away on this one. And this was Rodgers again. E.J. Rodgers is finding himself open here in the fourth quarter. Not enough for the first down. Ball is at midfield. Third and five. Big third and five. Parsons looking. Pump fakes. Going to keep it. Scrambles. Has the first. Has more. Turns the corner and now out of bounds around the 30-yard line. Parsons decides to keep it himself. Calls his own number. Takes it around the right edge. And gets the first. What's happening? Oh, a hold. Oh, goodness. I never saw the laundry on the field. The play negated. Wiped away. Off the board by a hold. Oh, womp womp. Remember, we are 
<laughs> oh, so this is going to bring a third and a lifetime right here. Ball back into Pioneer territory on the 40-yard line. They've got to get to the 45 on the other side. Parsons spins away, looking, throws, tipped in the air, and caught. Was he caught? Did Rogers catch that? It was tipped off the defender, and they say he caught it. Rogers with the catch along the sidelines. That is a first down for the Pioneers. I hope we're going to have a replay of that. They're getting it queued up. Trust me, you're going to like it. But that's a Pioneers first down. You can see right here, tipped off the defender into Rogers' waiting hands along the sideline. The drive stays alive. Parsons out of the backfield to Finley. Finley, ooh, gets upended. But that's going to be about a seven-yard gain on first down. One minute remains in the game. The Pioneers have two of their timeouts left. Well, somebody's keeping an eye on the clock here. It's still running. Pioneers not yet in field goal range. Not with this wind. No way. Parsons has it. Oh, has a man wide open. Down at the 20-yard line. Pass completed. This was Paul St. Louis. Paul St. Louis. I like just I just like saying St. Louis, but it's Paul St. Louis. Haven't called his number yet today, but that was huge. What a catch. Wide open on the far sideline. And that, that puts the Pioneers in field goal range. So they use their second timeout. They have one remaining. Ball is first and 10 on the 21-yard line with 43 seconds remaining in the game. Boy, this is getting exciting. I can tell you guys are excited because that chat room just went dead quiet. we got a lot of people tuned in right now. Thank you guys very much for joining us here on the Pioneer Sports Network. If you're just tuning in, 43 seconds remain, 24, 24. Tied up, Pioneers with the ball, in field goal range, kicking into a wind. Trying to walk away with two straight home victories. Again, this game earlier was 21-0 in favor of the pride from Clark University. Pioneers have come roaring back primarily here in the second half. And we are tied up at 24. Pioneer defense has held them to one field goal in the entire second half. Oh, this play seems broken already. I'm concerned, but the Pioneers can't go back-to-back -back timeouts. They're going to have to do something here. Parsons has it. Pump fake. Going for the end zone. Going into the corner. Oh, boy, what a push off. Was he in? No, they're going to say incomplete out of bounds. Boy, there was a lot of contact. This is the first time I think the officials might have actually missed a call. But the catch was made, but out of bounds. Out of bounds, so incomplete pass. 38 seconds remaining. Clock still stopped. All right, so... Second and 10. Where's the transmitter? Parsons, pump fake. They give it to Cherry. Cherry up the middle. And he's wrestled down. Definitely not enough for a first down. 30 seconds remaining. And I still don't like a field goal from here. Really don't. Pioneers are going to have to do something quick, though. They're lined up fast. 20 seconds remain. Third and nine. Parsons with it, going for the end zone. Tipped in the air, and it falls to the turf. Whoa, dangerous. The wide receiver and the defensive back came together. The ball pops straight up, and it falls to the turf. Oh, here's a heck of a decision right here. Clock is stopped with 13 seconds. So the ball is on the 20. Ball is on the 20. Again, talk with me on the mental math here. You guys can tell me if I'm wrong. So the ball's on the 20. To get through the uprights, you have to go past the 10 yards of the end zone. So that makes it 30 yards. Normally, the placeholder is about seven yards back from the line. So we're looking at something like a 37-yard field goal attempt. No, just, just look at the transmitter in front of so the Pioneer offense on fourth and nine going to stay on the field to try and get this first down, or are they going to be happy with a field goal attempt of, again, what I think is around 37 yards? Again, the Pioneers still in their huddle, so I don't know what unit will be heading out onto the field. 
I mean, they, they, boy. I mean, I, I think you at least got to take a, you got to take a shot, right? You got to, you got to try and get that field goal, don't you? With 13 seconds left, the worst that happens, you miss, you go to overtime. Well, it's definitely not the worst, but, but it looks like the offense is staying on the field. I am. Oh, yep. No, no. I'm sorry. No, there's the special teams. Okay, special teams. Here we go. Here we go. 13 seconds remaining, fourth quarter. Pioneers are going to attempt this field goal. Yep, he's seven yards back, 10 yards for the end zone. So this is 37 yards as far as I can tell. Play clock going. Timeout called. And I think Clark, with all their timeouts, wanting to ice the kicker here. So they have called a timeout again, just their first of the half. Just to try and make the kicker think about it a little bit here. Again, this is Trevor Hiley. Yeah, not, not his first rodeo. But this is 37 yards kicking into the wind. It has definitely gotten warm out there. So I'm just trying to give you all, all the information. Let you make your own decision on if this one is going to go through or not. Let's see if you guys are right by your computer. Hit it in the chat room. Is this one going to be good or not? Good or no? If it's a block, it's no good. If it's a miss, it's no good. If it's through, it's good. Good or no? What do you got? So here we go. 13 seconds. All right. Special teams heading back on, back out onto the field. 37 yards for what you will be safe to assume will be the game. Highly is ready. Almost a jump. The kick is up and it's blocked. Clark blocks it. Flag on the play. And it did look like Clark jumped early. This is a huge call. Let's see. Let's see. So again, blocked, but with flags down. They were trying to time it, and while Clark was close, it looks like far side, maybe he was early. Coming across the line, let's see. The officials conferring, big call coming up here. Personal foul leaping. Leaping. Gets a first down for the Pioneers. That doesn't matter. Six seconds remain. But now. So now the ball's placed at the 10, making this a much closer kick. So let's see. <laughs> let's see here. But again, that was a block. And it was a block due to leaping. But can they come up with another block? And now I think we're going to have another timeout called by Clark. Indeed, yeah. Timeout, Clark. Again, again, trying to ice the situation. Six seconds remain, tied to 24. Ball placed at the 10-yard line. So 27-yard attempt. Not going to lie. This game kind of ending on potentially leaping? It's, might be a new one. Might, might be a new ending. To a, to a game that I've seen, or called. Haven't, haven't had much in the way of leaping before. So when this game concludes, stick with me as soon as the stats go final. I'll give you a real quick rundown of the stats as they, as they finish. Again, I want to thank you guys all for tuning in here to the Pioneer Sports Network. I'm your broadcaster, Kyle Walker. It's my pleasure, as always. really enjoy Calling these games for you. I hope you enjoyed listening. It wasn't too terribly painful for you. But here we go. We're lined up. This for the game, potentially. Snap. Kick. On the way. He got it. The kick is good. And the Pioneers, with two seconds remaining on the clock, extend their lead to 27-24. Here late in the fourth quarter. And Trevor Hiley, the hero of the day, at least so far. Hiley now has got to kick it off. The special teams will 
be desperate to end this game, shall we say? Hey, this has been one heck of a back and forth game. This has been a good one, so credit to both schools and squads. So with with that, that uh, <laughs> that go ahead field goal will be the Olathe Eye Care play of the game. We can go ahead and mark that down right now. So the Olathe Eye Care play of the game is that potentially game winning kick, of 27 yards from Trevor Hiley. So the Pioneers now will be kicking into the win here. I imagine this is just going to be a little uh, angled chip shot. You don't want to send it back to one of their one of their speedy return men. You want to have an up man take this and just hopefully knock him down. It's only two seconds. And, yep, along the ground. No fair catch call for it. Down he goes. Play blown dead. And so no, no time taken off the clock there. And the officials want one second on the play clock. The officials want one second on the play clock. All right, so a lot of the Pioneers heading back into the end zone to guard what you imagine is going to be a Hail Mary. You also could expect a little bit of a hook and ladder situation. Now heading on to the field. Quarterback for Clark. They're keeping Elmore in the backfield. Uh, so he stays back with them. I don't know if that will be for protection or if he's going to try and leak out and be underneath. He's got three wide receivers to the right, one to the left. All right, and here we go. They're going hook and ladder. They're looking for all the pitches that they can possibly get. Oh, they're angling towards the sideline. They get it to Elmore. Ball's tipped in the air. And taken down, and that is the ball game. That game is ended with the emphatic tackle by Jalen Kariuk, who has had himself a day. And that does it for the last second play. Your final score from Olathe, Kansas, the Mid-American Nazarene University Pioneers, 27. And the pride of Clark, 24. What a great game. Good job by both squads. This was a fun one. So they're going to go to shake hands. Let me try and get us to our finishing stats. But a heck of a game by both sides. All right, let's get it updating here. So the Pioneers are now, they are on the road for the next two weeks. Just so you all know, they will not be here for a while. Their next home game will be in October. Make sure you go to mnusports.com and check out all the schedule information. So finishing the game for Williams, he was 18 for 26 for 269 yards and a touchdown. Wire had five receptions for 147 yards and a touchdown. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. Ostrander, he was 7 for 80. Graham, 4 for 32. Murphy, 1 for 6. And Pedroza, 1 for 4. On the ground, Elmore, 28 carries, 117 yards. Under 9 yet, net, and 1 touchdown. And then Mimes, 10 carries for 40 yards and 1 touchdown. Over for the Pioneers. Parsons, 20 for 32 for 295 yards and 1 touchdown. And that was the long school tying 90 yard, 90 yard record. And then let's see here. Mitchell, four receptions for 113 yards and a touchdown. Rogers, four for 70. Taylor, two for 24. Mauser, one for 21. Himes, three for 17. St. Louis, one for 15. Cherry, one for 13. Cole, two for 11. Finley, one for seven. Bryant, one for four. That is called spreading the ball around. On the ground, Parsons had four carries for 11 yards. Cherry, nine carries for 31 yards and a touchdown. Finley, six carries for 13 yards and a touchdown. And then Bryant, four for seven. So that's going to do it, folks, here from ODAC. Thank you all very much for joining us. We appreciate it as always. Go to mnusports.com, check out all on the schedule information, and we'll be back in October for the last two home games of the year. So make sure you're ready as uh, it's already going to be coming down to the end. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, very much. All the words together for joining us, and we'll see you next time.
Once again, your final score, Clark University 24, your menu, Pioneers 27! Thank you for supporting Pioneer Football and MNU Athletics. Drive safe. And we'll see you next time.